Good day, I'm Dr. Lisa Kellett, and I will be answering your YouTube questions. So please send them along. They will be very short little blurbs, um, and uh, I hope to be very direct and give you uh, a very um, concise uh, answer. Um, but of course, the best thing is to, to always see your dermatologist to get a proper consultation and assessment. So the first question is, what should you do about a keloid if you had steroids injections to flatten it and it came back flatter but bigger than before? So the thing to understand about keloids is, is their pathophysiology, about why they occur. And the reason for this is after a wound, a keloid forms because that scar is an overly aggressive scar in terms of its formation. So for example, it tends to be larger than the original site of injury. It's usually red and raised. It can be painful and very tender. Um, so there are multiple ways to treat keloids. The first thing and the biggest thing to note is to not to re-excise it. Do not cut that keloid out because you are not changing the underlying predisposition of the skin to develop a keloid. That is a genetic makeup. It can also occur, it's more common at certain, on certain areas such as over joints. But because you're not changing that predisposition, predisposition to getting a keloid, do not cut it out because you will just develop another keloid in that area and it will actually be larger than the original keloid. So that's step number one. The second thing to do is to look at and understanding exactly what that keloid is. It's a collection of scar collagen and blood vessels. That's what makes it red. So the treatment um, that is ideal for this is a combination of laser treatment and uh, what we call injectable lesional steroid injections. And what that does is the combination of the two tends to be the most effective way to treat it. Uh, the laser can either be something called a neodymium yttrium aluminum garnet laser. And what that does is that targets the blood vessels and the collagen in the keloid. The other uh, laser that we use is a, a type of resurfacing laser. So those are the two lasers that we can use. You usually use a combination of um, the two, sometimes just the one. The second thing we do is interlegional uh, catalog. And what I do here at the clinic is I actually will inject the steroid right after the laser. The benefit to that is that you've dilated the blood vessel, so you increase um, blood flow to the area, and you actually have warmed up the tissue so that the injection is so much more comfortable for the patients. And the two together work, work synergistically. They work in different ways to treat the scar. But together, there's synergism. So what that means is that you'll get a better result using the two together. Uh, it can take multiple treatment sessions. The nice thing is um, usually when you use a non-ablative laser, which is what we call the NDAG laser, uh, there is no downtime. So it's great for the patients and I have them come back about every three to four weeks if they're anxious about the scar. And the, the, um, the results are actually quite rapid. So it's great for the patients to see that they started with this very thick keloid scar and it helps to shrink that down quite quickly. Um, the other thing to note is um, if because you have a genetic predisposition to getting these keloids, is you have to use caution if you're going to do something in the future. So if you have to get surgery done, uh, please tell your surgeon about that predisposition you have to developing the keloid. And also, please avoid doing any piercings because often the keloids will develop at sites of piercing. So commonly we see them on the earlobes, we can see them um, on the stomach, um, we can see them on the lips, we can see the keloids develop anywhere. So you must use caution if you traumatize the skin in the future. Even for example, a, a flare up of acne can cause keloids um, in some people. Um, so I hope that's helpful to you and um, thank you for your question.